Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn and I'm here today in Fallout 4 to give you a tutorial on how logic gates work. These logic gates came with the uh, Contraptions Workshop and uh, I realize it's dark right now and the reason it's dark and I'm filming in the middle of night is because these logic gates emit light based upon whether they're powered or not and I want to be able to show that off but I'll try to remember to turn my flashlight on uh, when I need to be more clear. So uh, these logic gates came with Contraptions Workshop and they can be used to power specific things on or off based on pre-programmed criteria. You can pre-program them with a terminal or you could set up, say, a Rube Goldberg machine that flips a switch on or off when a ball comes by or when a component has been sorted in a conveyor belt or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to go through each one of them and explain exactly how they work. The bottom one is called an AND gate. The AND gate emits power only when both of its sources are powered. Now, to explain this, I'm going to show you exactly what each of these do. The red knob right here is an incoming power source. The black knob is an outgoing power source. So, whatever you want to be powered by this switch, you need to wire to the black conduit here. So as you can see, I have a stack of light boxes and each of these are powered to the black conduit within the gate. Now, over here, I have one generator generating three power. It's simply going to this uh, pylon here and then this is diverted between these two switches which are turned off. I then wire each of the switches to each of the red terminals. As you can see, both of the switches are off. Now, in order to trigger the AND gate, this needs both this one and this one to be turned on. So let's do that right now. Let's switch on one. And the bottom one isn't working yet. You can see that the red one is getting power. The green glow has turned on and the little yellow indicator lamp has turned on. But the black one does not have a green ring around it because it's not transmitting power out. And the bottom light is not lit, as you can see. So let's turn the other one on so that both this switch and the switch are turned on. And lo and behold, it works. The bottom light is now turned on, and both of these conduits are lit by the green light. Now, the gate above it is called the NAND gate. You see that it's got a little circle behind the switch here, and this has just a straight line. N-A-N-D, NAND. And this one will not transmit power if both of these are on. So the AND gate only transmits power if they're both turned on, and the NAND gate will not transmit power if both are turned on. So, let's turn one off, and you can see that it turned green, and it is now transmitting power. Now, I did a little bit of uh, uh, aggressive wiring here to show off the next one, which is called our NOR gate. In order for the NOR gate to transmit power, neither of the inputs must be turned on. And this can get a little confusing. So as you can see, this red incoming power conduit is not turned on. Unlike this one, this one is turned off. And yet, it is outputting power. And that's because the qualifications for the logic gate have been met. Neither this wire, which is going to a turned off switch, is transmitting power, nor is this wire, which is coming from the output of this conduit, which was our NAND. Remember, the NAND gate only transmits power unless both of its incoming power leads are turned off, and they both are. This is off, this is off, therefore the qualifications for the NAND gate are met, and it emits power, which doesn't make a lick of sense in the real world, but it does when it comes to logic. So this is emitting power, but this does meet the qualifications for the NOR gate because these are still turned off. Therefore, because this is connected to there, and it's generating power, but it's not actually coming from any power source, and because this is connected to there, and it's turned off, the NOR qualification is met, and it emits power. See? I know it's confusing. It took me a while to wrap my mind around it, but that's how it works. The next one is the NOT gate, and this is a basic inverter. And it only turns on if the leads coming to the red input 
do not have power. So in this example, this switch, which is turned off, is connected to the incoming power conduit. And this output, which is turned off as well, is connected to the input. And that meets the qualifications of not. Both must be off. And therefore, it's transmitting power. Which again, doesn't make a lick of sense in the real world, but it does meet the logical qualifications of the mathematic logic gate. Therefore, in this fake fantasy world, it is emitting power. So, those were a little bit tricky. <laughs> now let's get to the next one. This is the OR gate. In order for this to work, any connected power source can be turned on. Either this one or this one. Now it's not emitting power right now, because neither of them are turned on. But all we have to do is flip one, and bingo, the OR gate is fully powered. Now you see that all of these have now turned off. The NOR gate that required that both of the inputs be turned off is now no longer functioning because now this input has power. You see how that works? Then we can flip this on and the OR gate remains on because remember the logic dictates that either this one or this one needs to be turned on for the OR gate to work. So it still works. Now let's turn them both off to move on to the next one, which is the XNOR gate, the XNOR gate. And the logic behind the XNOR gate means that both of the inputs must be the same. Both of the inputs could be turned off, or both of the input inputs could be turned on, and that will generate power. Now in this instance, both of the inputs are turned off, and so it's not generating power. Now here is something kind of funny. You can see that the qualifications for the XNOR gate have been met because the output for the black conduit is green, which means that this light should be turning on. Indeed, if we reset this so that um, both of these are turned on, we're still meeting the qualifications for the XNOR gate, which means that both of the inputs need to be the exact same, and the light turns on. And that's because this red incoming power conduit has power, and both of the power conduits are the same. They're both generating power, which meets the qualifications, which also turns this on and the light comes on. But how do we get this to not only turn this green, but also transmit power if both of these are off? Well, I'll show you. The way to get that to work is to transfer power to it from the black output of a powered, but not powered, Conduit. I know. I'm, I'm angering myself by even saying this, but I'll, but I'll show you what's going on. So here we are at the NOR logic gate, and as you can see, it's neither getting power from this switch. So let's grab this and feed it to that, and then remove one of these, and then that. Presto. Clear as mud. <laughs> I realize that I'm, as I'm explaining it, it's hard to wrap your mind around unless you're actually doing it, but it does make sense. The XNOR gate means that both of them must be the same, and yet it still has to have some sort of power, even though it can't be real power. So this has a green light saying that it is generating power, even though there's real, there's no real power coming from these because they're both turned off. But the logic of the gate is recognizing that the logic of this gate has been met, therefore the power is transmitting, which is allowing it to fulfill the logic of this gate, which is to transmit power to the light. And so it works. That's, the be that's as best as I can do to explain it. I'm s I, I hope that makes a lot of sense. So that is the XNOR gate. Now, finally, the top one, which is the XOR gate, dictates that this will only transmit power if exactly one of its input power sources has power. And that's pretty simple. So all we have to do is turn one on and bingo. It turns on. Whew, okay, well, that was a bit to get through, ladies and gentlemen. I hope it made sense after all of my talking. That is how every single logic gate in the game works. You can hook them up exactly like this, and you will have a fully functioning series of connected logic gates that you can then manipulate by turning some switches on and some switches off.
Well, thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you walk away from this with a little bit of a clearer, more clear understanding of how the logic gates work. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to respond. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more Fallout 4 content and Contraptions Workshop content. I have a lot more in store for you. Thanks again for subscribing and stay tuned for more. See you later.